to talk about why, uh, why we're here? Oh, why certainly, here? yes. Yeah, for those who don't know, I'm here today at Lemonade Raw Milk Freedom Day. Sounds like a weird combination, lemonade and raw milk. What do they have in common? That the government wants to keep you from enjoying them. And I think that's really strange. Uh, lemonade stands were uh, part of my entrepreneurial past as a youngster, and I want to see the young ones who are growing up today enjoy the same opportunities that I did, learning from being an entrepreneur and uh, learning to help our and serve our neighbors and, and find out what they need and, and to meet those needs of our neighbors. And so I, I want to support what's going on here. There are people who are committing acts of civil disobedience by vending lemonade and raw milk here today. I am not participating in any civil disobedience. I don't want the 900 days in prison that may come with it, but I will be enjoying some lemonade and I've already enjoyed a, a fine bottle of raw milk. It took no time at all. It's some of the most delicious stuff I've ever tasted on earth. All right. So there's no permit for this, we're just doing it, right? There's no permit, that's okay. my understanding. No one asked any permission from any bureaucrat or, or uh, man with a fancy badge. Uh, people are just out here self-organizing and saying, let's have a fun day out in the park with our families and enjoy some fine cold beverages. Great. I think it's a wonderful idea and clearly it's a wonderful event. There's lots of media here and lots of smiling, uh, happy faces. What I enjoy the most is seeing the, the children are enjoying this so much so I, I think it would be a sin if the police were to intrude and, and ruin the, the day of these young ones so far we've been out here for about an hour and a half today selling lemonade and raw milk without a permit without licenses without permission from the nanny state this time last year three people were arrested on this very lawn for selling lemonade. Will Duffield, one of the three that was arrested last year at the similar event. So would you like to tell us about that, please? Yes, well, we were just uh, right over there on the lawn at the Capitol, and there were three of us, uh, Meg McLean, Catherine Dill, and I, and we engaged in voluntary exchange without state permission. We were selling cups of lemonade for 10 cents a piece to families enjoying the Capital. It was an August day, it was hot out, and we had some good business going on. Unfortunately, the, the state was rather upset that we had the gall to engage in this without asking them first, and they, they came out in force. Um, was first one officer on a bicycle, and within about 30 minutes there were 10 of them. Uh, they zip cuffed us, and we were let off, put in a van, and taken back to police headquarters. It was it was pretty intimidating. It was scary, intense. Um, back at the headquarters, they were asking us who our leaders were, where we met. Um, just just all of these questions that would make us out to be some sort of vast organization. And in reality, we I'd never met Catherine before that day. We organized over Facebook and. Um, you know, spontaneous order. They didn't seem to understand that, but... Okay, so, um, did they, uh, they file charges, I understand? They did. We were, we were forced to go to court several times over this. They offered us several plea deals, diversionary bargains. We refused those. We asked for a jury trial. They were, uh, they didn't want to give us a jury trial, and in the beginning, we were only facing six months, so technically we were not eligible for a jury trial. However, in their attempts to force us into these diversionary plea deals, they court ordered us to take drug tests. We disagreed with this. It was a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights. Our crime had crime had nothing to do with illegal drugs in the first place, so we refused. That then placed us in contempt of court, bumping our maximum sentence up to a year and making us eligible for our jury trial. We requested a hearing for the legality of drug tests for non-drug related offenses and when that hearing was granted to us they dropped all of the charges across the board uh, they simply wanted to get us out of their hair I think that it uh, they make a lot of money off of these drug tests uh, they have a deal with the lab even if you don't test positive for 
for oh, cannabis or whatever they're looking for, they still charge you for the privilege of having your bodily fluids inspected. So um, as soon as that went on the docket, they didn't want the possibility of a ruling not in their favor that others could fall back on for precedent. So it was easier for them just to drop all the charges. And Food freedom activist Kimberly Hartke, and she's going to tell you a bit about the organizations with which she works, and then she'll tell you about the Weston A. Price Foundation, which is a really interesting foundation. Uh, she, here she is with a sign. And how you doing today, Kimberly? Just great, Derek J. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And how far did you come to be here today? I came from Reston, Virginia, about a 30-minute drive. My so I, li I live out near Dulles Airport. And how did you hear about this event? Um, actually, I'm the publicist for the event. Our organization, the Weston A. Price Foundation, is a member of the Farm Food Freedom Coalition. And I also do PR for the coalition, and I do PR for the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund, which the Weston A. Price Foundation started to defend our rights to nutrient-dense foods from local farms without government interference. Wonderful. And so, tell me a bit about the work that you do on behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Well, I sent out a few press releases this week, about three of them on behalf of the organization. I blog at Online. Um, it's my personal news magazine about the local foods movement, and I'm working to make it the Huffington Post of Real Foods. I try to showcase the many voices of the local foods movement, whether they be farmers, farm market managers, food activists, nutritionists. Um, what I'm trying to do is um, show the world the value in these kinds of uh, foods and the fact that we need to fight politically for access. And I knew that I wasn't the expert on everything. I'm basically a PR person and I have um, a modicum of knowledge. So what I do is I invite more knowledgeable people onto my blog to share their stories, their testimonies. Um, I have a section called Food Politics and in that section I have small farms versus big governments. Those are my favorite stories to write, the tragic, heartbreaking stories of a family farm that shut down cruelly with insensitivity by the government. Um, a farmer that's got mouths to feed and cows that are giving milk uh, twice a day, and all of a sudden the government says, you're not allowed to operate. And the, the, it's just a human tra tragedy that's taking place all over this country. Um, in the worst economy we've seen in, in many decades, it's unconscionable. Robert Fernandez, the organizer of Lemonade Freedom Day. So, Robert, tell us, why are you here? Uh, well, we're here in D.C. today to uh, celebrate our right to voluntary exchange. As many of you know, we started Lemonade uh, Freedom in response to kids' lemonade stands being shut down. Uh, this year, we teamed up with the Raw Milk Freedom Riders uh, because it really is the same issue. You know, there's a lot of farmers out there that are uh, that are good, that are going through so much, so so many problems for just for selling raw milk. They have, uh, you know, government bureaucrats knocking at their doors with uh, arms, with guns pointed at them, uh, telling them they can't do what they're doing. Just just for, for providing a, a healthy food to to uh, willing and expecting consumers, uh, and and you know they're doing nothing wrong, and they're having this uh, aggression used against them, this this force by the government used against them. So you know they're really in a similar boat to the kids' lemonade stands that were being shut down too. So um, you know I, both issues, you know, and it's not just about lemonade or raw milk. It's about the right to voluntary exchange and you know the you, you know personal individual freedom and the right to put into your body what you want to put into your body, the right to consume foods that you want to consume uh, and that's 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 exactly what this is about and that's why we're here we're we're doing it on the on the Capitol lawn where last year at this time uh, three people were arrested for doing what, we, what we've been doing for the past two hours so uh, you know I think it was a great success and it, it, it goes to prove that there's strength in numbers because there were a lot more people here today and uh, you know I, I'd like to see more people go out on a daily basis uh, every day and do this and we need to be behind these people who are doing this on a daily basis and and, and stop just sitting by as bystanders and start you know, uh, becoming more active and participating in these types of things. What would you say to the people that claim that uh, regulating and licensing things like lemonade stands and lemonade and raw milk is a public safety for public safety? First of all, licensing is not about uh, health. It's about protecting the, the best interests of the, the large multinational corporations. That's what that's what the licensing is about. You have you have these uh, small farmers who who take a lot of time and care, and, and and they know the names of their cows who are 
producing milk and, and they're out grazing every day in the sun on grass and, and these are healthy cows and you know if, if there's anything ever wrong with them if these cows ever get sick they take them out of their circulation and, and you're not going to be drinking their milk until they're better they'll, then they'll be placed in back into the rotation to, to, of uh, providing milk um, however you know the large multinational corporations don't do that they, they create these big factories full of cows and the cows are basically just treated like machines and they're pumped full of drugs and hormones and antibiotics and they're given fillers just to fatten them up and get them to produce milk and that's that's their only that's their only uh, uh, you know uh, effort that's their only goal in life is to, is to is to produce milk and so so they're producing this milk and it's not healthy milk so then they have to have no choice they have to put it through the pasteurization process and you know it's 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 not a uh, it's not convenient for these large multinational corporations to take care of their livestock to take care of their product to provide a good product so would you say the raw milk is actually healthier than the commercial product you buy in the store oh I would absolutely say that the raw milk is healthier um, okay. you know uh, there's a, there's a big misconception of, uh, of pasteurization you know pasteurization does not produce healthy milk pasteurization does not uh, clean milk um, basically what pasteurization does is it heats up the milk to a point where it kills off all the good protein, all the good bacteria, all the good enzymes. But 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 the, but the the other thing is is that the bacteria that's in the in the milk is is actually good for you. The back, that, that it's beneficial bacteria. So when, when they heat it up, it actually breaks the bacteria up into millions of little pieces. And inside that bacteria are histamines, and those histamines get spread out throughout the milk. And and that's why people a lot of people have allerg um, allergies to milk is because of the histamine means that are that are you know created because of the pasteurization process and a lot of people that do, that do have uh, you know problems drinking milk are able to drink raw milk once they switch over to raw milk they have no problem with milk so you know it, it, it's definitely healthy because it has all the all the original enzymes all the original beneficial bacteria probiotics um, it has all the the original uh, vitamins and minerals whereas the pasteurized milk has none of that so it's, it's completely healthy for you